It is negative 28, minus 30 degrees here in uh, Minneapolis. And uh, I'm going to do a little experiment today on our Volkswagen e-Golf. So I have it right now in the garage, and there's a heater on in the garage. So what we're going to take a look at is uh, what is the range right now. It's about 55 degrees in there. Um, and then we're going to put it outside, uh, let it sit for a little while, and get completely cold, and then uh, get back in it and see what the range is then, and just see how it, uh, how it performs in minus 30 degree weather. So let's go uh, into the heated garage. Okay, the golf's been outside for a couple hours. Uh, it's minus 25 degrees out. Um, you can see the windows are frosted. Um, I haven't turned the heat on or anything. Um, haven't preheated it. It's simply been parked outside but fully charged. So first thing I want to try is um, I'm thinking a safety test. First thing I do if I got in this car is I have to be able to see. And the Golf comes with a heated uh, windshield. It has the uh, heated defroster built into the windshield, uh, like most cars have in the rear window. So that's the only thing I want to turn on, and I'll record it, and we'll see how well that works. Okay, I just turned the car on. I'm going to turn it to off, so there's no climate control. It says we have 56 miles in range, which is about right. Uh, that EPC light is on because I didn't have my foot on. There we go. Right now it's, it would technically be ready to drive. So I'm going to turn on the heated windshield. I'll show you how to do it. You press menu on the climate knob and that brings up this diagram. I'm gonna press this button right here. Okay, that is our heated front windshield button. So now let's watch and see. How will it work? Here, so if we were to get going, we would want to defrost that windshield. So I'm going to put it on defrost for a couple minutes and see what happens. So right now we're at 54 miles in range. Okay. All right, I'm going to turn off the rear defroster. I'm going to leave the front defroster on because really right now that is our goal is to potentially drive the car. We have to see where we're going. So I'm going to put it on max defrost. I'm going to turn this up all the way. So as you can see, and I can hear and feel the electric heater that just kick in. It got there's a slight vibration. And our range just dropped down to 39 miles. And it's saying that our potential range right now is, uh, if we turn that off, 16 miles more. So let's just see, um, sitting here, if it can uh, make it so we can drive. What is it saying? Our potential range is 15 miles now. So, the heater's definitely warmer now. It's not hot. But it's above freezing and maybe, maybe 80 or 90 degrees. But if you put your hand a little ways away, it's, uh, it's cool. So it's, it's only right on there. But it's enough to start defrosting. And uh, what is it, minus 19 right now. 
this windshield so we could drive. Okay, look at this. We're clear. And uh, I'm starting to finally warm up a little. So let's go for a little drive and see if while we're driving anything changes. Overall, the e-golf did pretty good. It was 20 below zero. And with that in mind, it would be hard for any car. When it's that cold out, the battery simply has a hard time keeping up. And because of that, your range is really diminished. Had we needed to use it that day for work, my wife who normally drives it probably could have made it there and back, although I think she would have been very nervous about it because she has about 20 miles round trip and there's not much wiggle room in there for that battery to drain while sitting at her office. Overall, on this first cold weather test, I'd give the eGolf a C- minus for the defrost time that it took and also the amount of power and battery consumption that it took to do so. It did it though, that's what's important. It did defrost the windshield as it was supposed to. And these are extreme temperatures and any car would have a hard time keeping up when it's 20 below zero defrosting a windshield. We love our Volkswagen e-Golf. Uh, it's one of the best decisions we ever made to purchase it. But as with anything, there are extremes and which really can test the endurance of any product. Before we bought this car, I did a lot of research to try and find out how well it did in the winter and how well it did in the summer. Here in Minnesota, we have extremes in both seasons and there wasn't a whole lot of data on it. I knew that other people had electric cars um, and I know Tesla, there's some reviews on, but the way I looked at it was Tesla's quite a bit different in my mind than a Volkswagen Eagle. If I really wanted to find out more, what do electric cars that are non-Tesla how do they function in the winter, in the summer, in northern states like Minnesota, Michigan, Wisconsin? Can they handle the extreme climate? And there really wasn't any answers when I was out looking. And so part of this video and this website is to try and make those answers available to other people and create a way for us to collaborate on those issues. And I think that the more people know about it, uh, the more likely they are to make a decision, hopefully, to buy an electric car. Uh, one of the biggest reasons I've found that people are hesitant to buy an electric car is for those very questions that I pose that I didn't have answers to. So overall, um, when it's 20 below zero, when most cars don't operate well, when most cars will have a very hard time starting, um, the Volkswagen e-Golf also had a hard time. And I think that that's not too bad. I don't think that's too extraordinary. Um, it would be incredible if it was the opposite, but when it's 20 below zero, everything's slower, things break, things don't work right. The Volkswagen did not break. It did operate. It did turn on. Everything functioned as it was supposed to. Um, it just used the battery a little faster, and that's okay. That's what it does. Uh, as soon as it's above zero and even more when it's above freezing the range goes up very quickly that but defrosting did take about 20 minutes um, I don't think it would have probably fully defrosted with just the wires running through the windshield it was just too cold once we did turn on the forced hot air the car was able to use the battery to generate enough heat to create enough hot air to blow it on the windshield and ultimately defrost the car it took about 18 minutes and uh, I'd really need to have a, a 2016 Volkswagen, you know, regular Golf or Jetta or something like that. Um, maybe even a diesel and a gas um, in minus 20 degree weather to, just to compare to see how different it was. But I was impressed that it did accomplish it. The biggest complaint again is how much battery it used to do it though. So overall, uh, in minus 20 degree weather, I'd give the Volkswagen a C minus. No heat coming out right now. This is the lowest I've ever, ever taken in this car. I'm a little nervous about going anywhere right now because it is cold out. I don't know what's going on. I want to get it. I want to be warm. Um, I don't know if it's broken. This is normal. What? I'm on the red for the battery. I'm not doing it right now. It's not even kind of struggling. It is just not doing it.
guys, worst case scenario. Yes, worst case scenario, we push it back. Yeah, or pull it gently with the other car. 